Okay, so we're gonna pull out this Robird uh, G31 fly barless system. Uh, I did an unboxing on this already and explained what all was in here, so if you haven't seen that, you can go look at my video channel, uh, CPO Heli, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna use it to get to business. Uh, I'm gonna need this USB cable. Uh, the very first thing I wanna do is update the firmware in the unit, uh, and I'm gonna go through that process uh, here as well. And then I'm gonna install uh, or set up the satellite um, receivers. And uh, then we're gonna hook up the servos and then work through centering those with the software on the computer. I'm gonna get that software from rober.net forward slash G31. As you can see here, um, it has the uh, installation software. Uh, whether it be for whatever operating system that you're trying to install, Windows operating system only, unfortunately, and then also the English manual uh, uh, or Chinese if you want that. So you get the, uh, the program from here. I've already downloaded and uh, I'm gonna run the program. As you can see, the very first thing I get is a pop-up that says check your motor connection. Uh, very important that you don't have the motor connected uh, for any of this setup. And then click OK. And then basically what you're gonna see here is the, uh, the display for the Roberg uh, fly barless system software. Um, I show a disconnected state down here. I don't have access to anything, but I can check demo mode and that will allow you to navigate the setup guide. And uh, you can see all the different setup options that we're gonna run through uh, with the software. So that's basically how that works. I'm gonna go back uh, into uh, the welcome screen, get out of demo mode, and then we'll get ready to set up for uh, uh, setting up the flybarless system. Okay, to get going with this uh, flybarless system setup with the Rober G31, the first thing I wanna do is connect up the satellite receivers. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I have chosen to use dual satellites uh, I don't know why, it just sounded like a cool idea. The Robert can do it, so uh, that's the way I'm gonna do it. Uh, notice this uh, blank plug is in here. This is a safety plug to keep you from accidentally plugging power into this first uh, port. So anytime you're messing with plugging things in, particularly if you're gonna be powering the unit, uh, make sure you have that plug in there, that's very important. So following the instructions, uh, I'm gonna need a couple of things. Uh, I'm gonna need two of these um, SRX SAT cables, um, and uh, it, the kit comes with two of them, which is very handy, because I'm gonna need both of them. The other thing I'm gonna need is uh, one of these uh, cables to jumper them together. So basically what happens is there's two channels that you can use for the two different satellite receivers, but only one of them provides power, so you have to jump one to the other to, to get power. So here's my one satellite, here's the second satellite. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this uh, super long corded satellite receiver. And I'm gonna plug this in. Uh, I need my, my little uh, satellite uh, SRX cable. So uh, the question is now which way is uh, white and which way is black, and I'll have to check the uh, the manual to figure that out real quick because I wanna make sure that I do that right. So fair enough. Um, it looks like, from everything I can tell, the black goes to the bottom with the white on top, just like that. Oops, that aligns with how the, uh, the plug is in there as well. Uh, these channels are, these uh, plugs are kind of shaped the same there. So that's, uh, that's that. That is basically the first satellite uh, receiver adapter. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the second SRX adapter. Again, white on top. And actually, uh, actually this is pretty cool. You can't screw this up um, without trying really hard because as you can see, 
there's a channel, uh, there's a ridge on these plugs. You can only plug them in one way. Uh, and there's a, these little grooves in the top that will accept those ridges. So that's really cool. Um, so I was right, <laughs> I couldn't have got it wrong. So white on top, black on bottom, and uh, it will only let you do it that way. So I'm plugging the second one into the SRX2 port. So I have SRX1 and SRX2, and basically I have uh, those two uh, hanging out there. Now on the first one, I'm gonna plug in my first um, main uh, SAT receiver, making sure that I get these uh, plugs lined up just right. And that goes in there like it's supposed to. And then I'm gonna plug in to the second one, my other satellite receiver. Making sure that that goes in right. And basically what I have is this. So two satellites, uh, each one uh, you know, plugged off of these adapters. Now I need to connect these two adapters to provide power uh, to the second satellite. So basically, as I mentioned, they have these jumpers and there is a uh, indicator of on here negative, positive, and then the, the other control channel. So uh, in order to put that right, just gonna follow what it says, negative, positive, and then the white. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to here to connect them together. Uh, and then it's gonna go just like that, negative, positive, and then the white. So here's what I have. I have the Robird G31. I have uh, two SATs plugged in, one in SRX1, one in SRX2. Those run to where the satellites are plugged into, and then I have this one jumper that are combining them. Now when power is provided to this, I should get both of these powered on. I'm not gonna apply power just yet, uh, remotely. What I am gonna do though, is uh, connect it to the computer for the first time so that I can make sure that I have uh, everything up to date. Before I get too far with uh, setting up the uh, Robert system, I want to double check the manual. I saw something in here that I hadn't uh, seen before and it's quite important. So when you get down here to, uh, to the setup information, uh, right away, um, you know, in the setup guide for receiver, there are some instructions specific to uh, setting up the transmitter. Now, I already set up the transmitter, as you just saw, uh, per instructions that seem to work for most systems. However, this particular system uh, has me making some changes. For example, it has me going back to a single servo 90 degree uh, mode, not the 120 degree CCPM mode and uh, it does want to make sure that I disable dual rate and expo on all channels uh, as well as set linear throttle and pitch curves. So um, I'm going to do that real quick and make sure that I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm assuming what that means is the entire all control is going to go to the Robird uh, is, instead of letting the transmitter uh, make some of those uh, adjustments based on those settings. So I'm going to uh, knock that out real quick and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into the receiver to make those changes. I need to set the, the mode to uh, one servo. So if I go down here to adjust list, um, I can get to, oops, actually that's in setup list. Swash type. Uh, one servo 90, okay. And then I need to make sure no sub trim on all channels, I already did that. 
Uh, set endpoints, 100% I already did that. Linear throttle and pitch curves. That's a just list. Um, throttle curve. That looks like linear. Pitch curve, linear. Okay, disable dual right and expo on all channels. I'm assuming INH is what I want, so uh, that's all done. Inhibited. And uh, disable channel mixing and all that stuff, which I already, uh, I haven't done any of that stuff, so um, yeah, it's all inhibited. Inhibited, Revo Mix, Snorm, all right. I think I'm okay. The key that I think I needed to do was get that uh, set up for a 90% swash type and, uh, and that's it. So uh, now we can move forward. So now that I have the transmitter set up, uh, I can go back up here to the, uh, the beginning of the manual. And there are some things that the manual says you do before you power it up uh, the system for the first time. So before you actually power up the servos, and, uh, and, and use your ESC for power. You need to go in, plug the USB cable into the, the Robird and uh, to the computer, update the software, make sure you set your uh, selections for your receiver type and your servos. So you have to do that before you do anything else. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Uh, and I've already been through this step, but I'm gonna go through it with you. Um, so basically, um, I'm back to the Roberg uh, screen here. If I take in, plug in the USB only uh, to my Roberg. Uh, no other uh, power input into the, to the system itself. And then plug in USB to the computer. Uh, you can see now it's uh, showing a connection of my uh, gyro uh, fly barless system to this software some information here about my particular unit. I need to, uh, if you want to update, you can check for update by clicking online update. I've already done this, um, but that's where it will update both firmware uh, for your fly barless system as well as software updates, I believe. Um, but the first time I did this, it did update my uh, fly barless system firmware to this newest 0.98E version. Okay, so you want to go to the setup guide and here it wants a uh, selection for um, what uh, receiver you're using. I'm using DSM 2048, that's DSM X. Okay, and this does give you some, uh, you know, some examples of, uh, of, of how to connect it up. And the next thing I need to do immediately is go in and set my servo um, hertz rates. So my, my swash servos and my tail servo, servo are all 333 hertz. Uh, and then for motor, for an electric helicopter, you just want to set it to analog. If you're getting your power from the ESC, uh, that's an analog input. And really, that's all I need to do right now. I'm going to hit save, but I believe if you go to the welcome screen, it will automatically save all that for you. Um, so that's the first thing you have to do before you start doing anything else. Um, and as you can see, um, uh, you know, as I as I navigate out of that, I get some uh, some light indicators on my rover that there's some activity happening. So I'm assuming that's saving that in the firmware uh, of the device itself. Now that I have that, um, we can start going a little bit deeper into the setup, including setting things like uh, the uh, the gain channels. I only have a six channel uh, transmitter. Uh, I'm assuming that I'm gonna to wanna to set these to zero, which is gonna turn them off, and that means I'm gonna use the knobs on my uh, gyro. So if you look here at the gyro unit itself, there's, a, there's a, uh, two, two knobs for the gain settings. I'm gonna use that to set the gains. You can do it remotely through, uh, through your transmitter if you have enough channels available to do that. Uh, the next thing I want to do, go back to servos. Uh, I'm just looking here at some quick things I can do before I plug everything in. Swash type, 
Um, it is a 120, so that's already selected for me. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to go um, go ahead and get out of here and uh, and unplug the system. And then I'm going to uh, hook in the servos and start working on getting those centered, which is the real goal of what I want to accomplish today.